Ronda Rousey today did an interview and buried, well, actually the entire company, but in particular, she buried uh, Bruce Pritchard, John Laurinaitis. She said they could go fuck themselves. She said the WWE was an absolute shit show. She said that uh, they couldn't hold her hostage and not let her talk anymore. And she also revealed that one of the reasons that she retired was due to multiple concussions, which started when she was doing judo, and she hid them for a long time because she wanted to keep competing. So apparently she's been getting concussions, you know, starting in her judo career, probably through UFC, Well, she's cer- probably certainly WWE again, as well. Cer- certainly in the Holly Holm fight and the uh, Amanda Nunes fight, she could have gotten a concussion in, in, in those fights for sure. And she said that they had a complicated history with talents getting concussed, and she felt she couldn't talk about it. That's a really interesting. That's a really interesting statement. It sure is. Yeah. Well. Didn't I mention mean, anything it, about Vince. Didn't mention anything about Paul Levesque. Didn't mention anything about Nick well, Khan. She, um, she mentioned. I mean, in her book, she certainly mentioned. In the book, Vince. she did, but not in the interview. Yeah, yeah. In her book, she definitely mentioned Vince. Um, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's a, it's. Interesting. Um, you know, basically in, in her book, she, you know, talks about the plight of women, you know, in WWE. And it's all accurate. You know, I mean, they used to do bra and panties matches and they were probably, you know, kicking and screaming that they had to stop. And basically that the casting couch and everything that you've heard, you know, that people got pushes based on perhaps who they were sleeping with and, ba- you know, basically just, you know, ripped on. You know, not, not and and again, not saying it's so much now because again, women have a lot more leverage now because they are a much bigger part of the show, and the audience reacts to them as wrestlers and athletes. Whereas before, you know, the women were there to parade around in bikinis and whatever. You know what I mean? That's they were there. It's basically a bikini show in a lot of ways, um, with you know, and trying to teach some of them to wrestle a little bit enough to do a short match and things like that. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, they got a bad history. Um, present isn't so bad, though. In comparison, it's it's worlds better um, than it was 10 years ago, even. But, um, you know, but again, like one of the things that's been talked about in the Vince lawsuit situation is, is that the same people, or not all the same people, but many of the people who were there during that period and many of the people who came from the old wrestling business are still there and you know i mean they're whatever you know that that's and if you want to you know uh clean out if but i don't think anybody wants to clean out i mean i think that's you know basically they they want you know vince out um vince is out lauren ice is out and that's where they think they want the buck to end is with with those two um and you know kevin dunn's gone um you know, and that's on his own volition, but it's possible that something here could have, uh, you know, led to his name getting out. Maybe, maybe not. But, um, um, you know, the, you know, and then obviously there's uh, uh, Nick Khan's name and, and uh, Brad Blum's name as far as the lawsuit goes. But there's nothing implicating. I mean, like we people can assume a lot of different things, but there's nothing implicating that they knew anything more than... Um, you know, Vince had these things, and and they really were. You know, I mean, the the attempt was to keep Vince out, and they really were powerless to do it. I mean, you could have said that they should have quit. You know, as as members of the board to protect the company, um, and some did. Some members of the board did quit, and some, the others did not. So this is her new book. She had uh, my fight, your fight, which was the first one. This one is called Our Fight, and uh, presumably. Is this the one you read? What the the brand new one? I haven't read the new book. Okay, no. all right. So uh, that I don't presumably have, I, I, don't, has I don't I don't even have a copy of it. A lot about her WWE career. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I mean, she. It's interesting. I mean, she was friendly with Stephanie McMahon, and not too many others in the company. I mean, I mean, there's you know Shayna, Natalia. Paul Heyman, there's probably a couple of others, um, you know, that she was friendly with. But as far as management went, I mean, she was not 
uh, friendly with Vince McMahon and uh, Bruce Pritchard. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, but one of her tweets made that very clear before. But, um, you know, and again, the lawsuit, which she's aware of, obviously, you know, if, if you think of Ronda Rousey and her background and her mindset and her reading this lawsuit, um, you know, it's pretty easy to see she's going to be infuriated by by that lawsuit. I mean, most women, most women were pretty repulsed that read it. You know, I mean, including in the company. I mean, it wasn't like people were looking at that thing and, and trying to like, I mean, there are, you know, obviously there are people in the company who looked at that thing and, you know, the first thing they try to do is defend him or this and that. But, uh, you know, a lot of people did not try to defend him at all, you, you know, within the company. I mean, people who were even in a situation where they've been defending other people in the company to me, um, Nobody bothers to try to defend Vince to me. You know, I mean, it's almost like they've thrown in the towel on him. It's like he's gone and we can't even try to defend him. But, I mean, just imagine, um, you know. Well, in the case oh, of Vince, I mean, I mean, those text messages. I oh, mean, yeah. There, there's no, like, you can, you can speculate about this person. You can speculate about that person. But we don't. What we do know is those text messages are real. And oh yeah, they're they're impossible to defend. They're, you know, Vince is impossible. To, I've said it from the start. Vince is impossible to defend here, and Laurinaitis too. You know, I mean, he's going to try to defend, saying he was the victim and everything. But I mean, there's enough there with him and Priors and everything. You can't defend him either. Um, you know, so that's the situation. But yeah, um, I'm sure if I mean, I mean, I would presume that she had finished her book before the lawsuit came out. Uh, but if she didn't, and that's in there, I can just imagine uh, what would she would say about the lawsuit. 1950 pop culture quiz. The blank moved from New York to San Francisco in Giants. 1957. Holy sh... <laughs> A sports question? A sports ball question. <laughs> Brian got it right. Do you know what sports? <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> the blank corporation introduced jute boxes that could play 45 and RCA wait a minute I gotta see if I have the answer hound a dog <laughs> no that's the wrong question hound dog it's an Elvis Presley song <laughs> five <laughs> thank god we did this <laughs> well, what's the answer what was the question <laughs> hey guys did you love this clip if so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.